In this lecture, we will derive the Navier-Stokes equations for incompressible isothermal flow. This is the compact form of momentum equation. First, we need to understand why we need the Navier-Stokes equations. The number of unknowns in the momentum equation are total 10, where rho and v are unknowns and v vector has three components in x it is u in the y it is v and in the z direction it is w these are four unknowns and another unknown is in the form of sigma ij where sigma ij is the stress tensor which has three components of normal stress which are which is the pressure acting on the wall and three components of shear stress which are the viscous stress so total six unknowns are present in this sigma ij stress tensor so there are total 10 unknowns in this momentum equation and we have only four equations which are one is the mass equation and three momentum equations to solve the fluid flow problems so we cannot find 10 unknowns from four equations so we need the navier stokes equations in which we we will convert this stress tensor in the velocity field consider a fluid which is at rest the only force acting on the fluid is the pressure force so the stress tensor can be written in the form of pressure in this way when the fluid is in motion the the stress tensor can be written in the form of pressure and shear viscous stresses the viscous stress tensor for an incompressible newtonian fluid is tau ij is equal to 2 mu epsilon ij which shows that the viscous shear stress is directly proportional to shear strain rate this viscous stress tensor can be written in the form of cartesian coordinates in this way so we can write the stress tensor in the form of pressure and viscous stresses we have the x momentum equation now we will replace these stresses with pressure and viscous terms we will use the x terms of this stress tensor and substitute these values into this x momentum equation after substitution of the viscous term into this x momentum equation we get the momentum equation in this form where the stresses have been replaced by velocity gradients and viscosity in this equation capital d u over capital d t is the material derivative which is defined by the divergence of velocity with respect to time with respect to x y and z this highlighted region of the x momentum equation is equal to this material derivative so we have the x momentum equation in this form after some rearrangement of the viscous term we will get the equation in this form in this e form of equation we have rearranged the viscous terms only and if you notice that this highlighted part of the equation is the mass conservation and for incompressible flow this term should be equal to zero if we put it equal to zero then this whole term will be equal to zero and if we further simplify this equation the only term that is left is partial square u over partial x square partial u square partial square u over partial y square and partial 
square u over partial d square which is the x component of the momentum equation where del square is the Laplace operator which is defined by this relationship similarly we can write the y momentum equation and z momentum equation and if we want to combine these three Navier-Stokes equation into one we will replace the velocities with vector pressure gravity force with vectors this is the compact form of Navier-Stokes equation we can expand these Navier-Stokes equation in the form of Cartesian coordinates where this first term is the divergence of u velocity with respect to time x direction y direction and z direction the first term on the right side is the pressure gradient along x the second term on the right side is the gravity force and the third term on the right side is viscous terms so in this lecture we have derived the navier stokes equations Thank you for watching.